Hello and welcome back. This is chapter two of Further Look at Financial Statements. This video is our intro. It's our warm up video. Uh, each week I'll start off with some miscellaneous items. I think that this video will be helpful. Uh, I usually start uh, at least one of my classes like this in person where we kind of talk about what did we do last week uh, and what does the week ahead look like? What are some key deadlines? What are some key tricky things? Uh, do I anticipate a lot of work this week or future weeks, uh, etc. So this is your warm up. Feel free to completely skip this video. I mean, I'm going to try to make it jam packed with things that be helpful and pertinent to you. However, there won't be any content, um, like directly content in these intro videos. So if you are the kind of person who doesn't like to start a meeting with a little chit chat or a little bit like, how was the weather? Or like, how was your weekend? These videos might not be for you. And that's okay. Uh, not everything has to be. And I just want to fully tell you, stop listening now. In fact, you probably already have. Okay. So for the rest of you, um, this is our warm up, our intro. What's up this week? I'm going to tell you about Huberman and then a little bit about our discussion boards. And at the end, I will let you know why there is a picture of a sheep up here and why a sheep or lamb um, tends to come into some of my lectures every once in a while. All right. So what is up this week? Well, I'm going to pull up our latest discussion board post and talk through this a little bit. Okay, so here it is. And here, oops, no, 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 that's next week's. All right. Um, we are going to talk about upward and onward. So we had some tech issues last week. Uh, we are going to go, um, you know, and understand that tech happens. But this week, I really wanted to focus on um, the fact that this is actually a little bit of a shorter week, although, how do I say this? Um, it's going to look shorter because you're going to see two videos. Um, the second one's actually going to be pretty long, I anticipate. So really, um, you know, when you look at, I'll just bring up the syllabi. When you look at the syllabus here and you see, okay, it is going to be 2.1 uh, to 2.13. It ends up being one learning objective. However, that learning objective is essentially all <laughs> all of um you know financial statements and how to order the assets the liabilities and the shareholders equity so we kind of talked about the different like how to put the financial statements together last week this week we're going to say okay cool now that we have them in the right bucket um what is the order within the buckets um and what what is, what do they mean so it's not just an asset but what is a current asset what is a long-term asset uh and how do we put those in order because there is a, a specific way in which you need to present them all right so at the end of this week you will have both chapters one and chapter two due at friday at 11 59. once you hit uh, 80 or above boom you automatically get up to 100. and if for whatever reason you're not able to do one or both of these at the end of the term, the lowest two are dropped. Okay, so I want to give you a heads up because next week you are going to see that it might appear a little bit longer, as especially for reading, because you are encouraged, heavily encouraged, uh, to read the textbook, uh, likely before, but definitely um, after the lecture videos. And this is going to be more reading next week. So next week's going to be pretty heavy because you're going to have a full chapter to read. And then you're going to have um, the adaptive assignment due for next week. So read the assignment or pardon me, read the, <laughs> read the chapter, uh, watch the mini lecture videos, and then do the um, chapter assignment. And you'll also have a mini test on chapters one and two. So really keep that in mind as you're putting together this week to also keep in mind next week as well, which is why I say, hey, like, what about next week? All right, so um, we're gonna have another live Q&A time. I am recording this um, before our message is going out, so you'll see that um, this hasn't yet been populated, but we do have um, Bree and Vishu will be on the office hours. Uh, Vishu's just gonna also add his link, so that by the time you're watching this, the link will be up. All right, so that is what is up this week. Uh, second point, Huberman. Huberman, uh, Andrew Huberman is a Stanford professor. He's a neurobiologist and he's a podcaster. He gives practical uh, applied advice so that people can live uh, their best life. 
really use biology to shape um, our environment, to shape our experience. And uh, I've really been enjoying his podcasts. Uh, if you kind of see, each one of his podcasts is around 90 minutes, or he tries to have them be no more than 90 minutes. And he frequently talks about the fact that our brain kind of goes with, uh, I believe it's cir uh, circadian rhythms, uh, and that is about 90 minutes in length. Now, mine might be 70, yours might be 100, but in general, uh, people's brains are about 90. However, and that just means um, the learning blocks of time in which our brains work best without rest. However, within that 90 minutes, it's not like we are, <laughs> it's not like we're a car. We're not just like, boom, turn over the engine and the car starts and it's off to like the races. Um, no, some of us, um, you know, may need a, a little bit warmer. Um, you know, if you grew up in Calgary or anywhere with snow, you were like, okay, yeah, you turn on the car in the winter and you let it run for a little bit um, before you actually go to move anywhere. And so that's also what Huberman says, is like at the start of your 90 minutes, don't expect to just like jump in and be excited to work and get the work done, but rather you kind of need to like ease your way in. So that is why I'm gonna have these intro warm up videos. It'll be a good place for us to recap a little bit, um, maybe chit chat, maybe, you know, if something fun comes up this week uh, or last week, I can talk about it here. But essentially, this is your warm up and it won't have any like direct content. But um, it's just a way for us to kind of get to know each other a little bit. And that brings us to my last point um, for this, and that's getting to know each other a little bit. So I want to say thank you so, so much to all of you that watched the videos, who emailed me, who um, posted discussion, who met uh, with Ishida last week for office hours, uh, and really just for showing up and being engaged. Week one sometimes is the hardest. Again, think about it like Huberman. You're getting started. You're getting rocking and rolling. We're shifting gears uh, from the summer and we're now in school. Whether you're first year, third year, fourth year, seventh year, 11th year, it doesn't matter. It's still a shift, likely a shift. All right, so I want to say thank you so much. Um, if you email me, I'll never call out your name specifically on here. Um, but if you post and you post with your name, I'll probably use your name here. Uh, if I talk about it at all. I want to say thank you, Cassidy. Um, and thank you so much for watching the lecture videos. And I love blue or green or both. I absolutely, um, you're not the only one that loves color blue. <laughs> Elizabeth does as well. Uh, and Abby is like, no, -uh. um, <laughs> she's like always been purple, uh, is and <laughs> is and always been and probably will always be purple. I love it, Abby. Thank you. Um, I'm learning a lot about SD too, our marker. He, he loves a lot of the colors, so fabulous. Spencer's favorite color is definitely blue, and while Logan's is red, and same with Nathan's. And then, cool, awesome, another color purple, and same with Samantha's, so fabulous, fabulous. And I absolutely agree, Elle, uh, indecisive as well, uh, blue and red. And I wanna thank Sophie, who said um, that the most difficult part of the lectures, remember at the last bit of the um, last question, I said, what was gonna be like the most difficult part and how would you tell a friend like to study for that? And so Sophia said that the most difficult part was organizing the income statement, statement changes in equity and balance sheet. And I love how she put them in order. So like kudos, even, you know, first with the income statement, uh, changes in equity and balance sheet, awesome. But then once um, she did the practice problem and worked through it, it was fine. Yeah, cool, awesome. And like, congrats on pushing through that friction because I know it's not easy. And, and I agree, the textbook can take a bit of getting used to. A lot of words, they tend to repeat. Um, and there's like same or similar words. And so I can't think of a, like a word off the top of my head, but I'll often have uh, students come to me in office hours and there'll be students whose language First language is English, students whose second language is English or third language. And, and it definitely is something not just for first year, but also third year accounting, where it really is, you know, Warren Buffett said accounting is the language of business. Well, accounting is also kind of like a language on its own. Just like once you get into economics or once you get into like pure applied maths, there's there's really that vernacular and in accounting it's no different. So um, thank you, Sophia, for pointing out that the book it takes a little bit of getting used to, but again, get in there and working it out. Like, 
big fabulous first week for you and for uh, for everyone here so thank you so so much uh, for your attention and if you're like oh no I skipped first week what I just go it's okay you got time um, you probably got some time so you know please go back check out first week uh, the videos are there for you post to the discussion board um, see us in live Q&A book some time we'd love to hear from you alrighty so uh, another thing on the discussion board, it's a good question about the tech. I just want to go over one last time in case uh, there's any more confusion. So I'm sorry if you're like, I'm done with, done with you, Samantha. Um, okay. So if you are wondering how do I get my textbook, please, please, please go to your content, go to your e-text and click this link here. You can buy the textbook directly from here, or you can put in your textbook um, my lab code if you bought the te textbook from the bookstore. If you just go to wiley.com and try to buy the textbook outside of this course, unfortunately that won't work and you'll have to you know, go do a techie problem and talk to, I, I really recommend doing the live chat option if that ends up being you. All right, and that's because uh, embedded in our course um, is, you know, even beyond this, once you click into this, you'll get even more um, techie stuff behind the scenes and it's integrated. So by, let's see, by clicking and registering here, you'll get access to all of our mini tests, you'll get access to all of our adaptive assignments, and then this all gets hooked up to your grades account. So really important to, to link it up the first time. Alrighty, so that's it for the warm up. Oh yeah, the sheep. <laughs> so I I absolutely love, uh, in case you can't tell, teaching, and I love interacting. And although you might say, well, you're not really interacting here, <laughs> I'm trying. And thank you uh, to the one student who emailed me and said, I appreciate you trying to be funny. <laughs> and a few other people said some kind words. And this person was like, it's difficult to make jokes to an invisible audience. Fair. Um, I will say, though, as an educator, uh, so I've been at this 37. I've been at this at least in person since I was 27. I've been involved in education since about 24, 25. And, um, and in Marker and University as well. Before that, I will say that sometimes, as when I was a student, as I currently am a student in my uh, doctoral studies, sometimes as students, we, how do I say this? We don't exactly bring the energy to the classroom. And myself as a prof, that's my job. You know, I bring the energy, I bring the answers, I bring the questions, I bring the content. Like, that is my job. And I am here for whatever version um, you are able to bring. I'm just like, cool, thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for clicking on this video. And so with the sheep uh, and with a lot of my lectures, especially my first few years here at Dell, I would have this big lecture, like all planned. And I'd be like, sweet, I you know, practice it a little bit and I'd be all ready. And then I would come to class and like three slides in, I'm just like failing. Like it hurts. Like it's not bad, like, how do I say this? Like the content is there, uh, the questions are there, but like people are tired. So this was for my cost management course. It's a uh, third year or, and it's cross-listed with the MBA program. It's COM 3116 in case you're interested. And we were talking about split off costs. And let's just say we talked about sheep and then we talked about um, mutton and we talked about wool. And so we started off with a sheep and we ended up with mutton and wool. And all of a sudden we ended with some engagement too. So every once in a while, <laughs> um, a student from that class, uh, and that was a, like several years ago, would send me like a picture of like a beanie baby sheep or like, you know, text thread of her and her friends. They're like, oh no, not the sheep. So, you know, I'm just going to carry that joke on through with you all. And if you're here for that, great. And if you're like, what is there, the sheep? Well, you know, just sometimes you gotta, you gotta have fun. And if you're here to play along, cool. I appreciate that. All right. Um, I will see you in the next video where we will end the warm up and start with the content. Cheers.